I'm making another video trying to show what uh, the AO486 core can do for the Mr. FPGA. Um, the last video I made it was um, called the Cache 20 core, which is, was an earlier release. Um, they started back with um, I th think the f the first one was actually called Cache One or something, and it just got more numbers as they continued developing on it. Um, and the last one on the forums that got released, I think it was earlier today, is called Cache 25. Um, and the one before that was Cache 24. And uh, in Cache 24, the update was that it now has uh, Visa support, support for Super VGA and the extra graphics modes that gives. So, for example, if I run Game Wizard. If I do. Seems like it might not run. Mm. Maybe it's actually running something else. Um, but yeah, the first few times we tried running that core, um, they, they just shared it and then we found out that they also used a, a new firmware for it, a new uh, BIOS for the graphics card. Um, the one that uh, that is currently used and that was used in in Cache 20 was uh, the original graphics firmware, which is um, which is just a regular VGA graphics card. It's it's uh, running, but the new one is a uh, Super VGA, and um, we managed to find one on the internet that we could use. We were told what. Um, what CSE check code it would get this um, certain firmware or BIOS file, uh, and it's the ET4000 graphics card. Um, so in the uh, Cache 20, we had this setting where we can set the the speed of the CPU, and uh, now they're also adding UART speed where it can run times 10. I haven't tried using UART, but it seems it can be used for PPP, which I think is a type of internet connection. Console, I'm not sure what that's supposed to be for. And uh, MIDI, to uh, to connect it to something that changes how the, uh, the MIDI sounds. Uh, and uh, I think there are some videos that shows how it works and you can do some interesting stuff with it, I'm playing uh, special types of music where you can change the MIDI uh, sound font, which is like an instrument or something. Um, but it might already have had this, I'm not sure. Um, and then we have some settings for, um, for V-Sync, which can be variable. That one was already there. Uh, we can change it to 16.9 instead of 4. Th for three aspects radio, that's just a bit annoying though. Um, but it, when we change this, it actually uh, I noticed in Windows the color coding becomes completely different. So it seems like they actually do switch around. Uh, so this says uh, BGR and which is blue, green, red, and the other one is RGB, the regular or more well-known one for me at least, uh, red, green, blue. So all the red colors become blue and all the blue colors become red instead, and that looks pretty strange. Um, this is uh, the sound mode, so the sound chart, where what, it, what type it is. Um, sometimes you might have to change between these to make sure a game is working, but if you change it while you're doing something, uh, it might mess things up because it actually changes it at the runtime, just like the the speed one here. Um, when you change that, it actually changes while the system is running. Um, and the new option here is the RAM size, where it can change the RAM size to 256 megabytes. So let's try that. So here it shows, um, as you can see, total extended XMS memory is now 
261 kilobyte, a thousand kilobyte. So that should be about 258 megabytes. Uh, and it then makes 32 of them into EMS memory and I'm not sure if that's a limit for it or if that's just because that's how I configured my files. And because I'm running uh, DOS 7.1, uh, the Windows 98 DOS, it, uh, it actually has 620 kilobyte conventional memory free, which I find pretty useful, but mainly I'm using this because it supports 4 gigabyte disk, uh, hard disk sizes. It might even support even bigger disk sizes, but I'm not sure the the USB stick I'm using and the the file system on that supports uh, files more st bigger than four gigabyte, so I keep it below that. Um, but yeah, let's try game wizard again. Pretty sure that should work. So let's try 16 megabytes now. And and this is probably a bug, but it uh, thinks it now has 64 megabyte XMS memory. Um, we're not sure why it does that. Uh, the ones I'm talking with on the forums, um, I'm not sure the ones that actually works on this has mentioned any much on the forums. They're probably busy trying to to get uh, a new film, um, a new version of this working. <laughs> mm. But I'm not sure why Game Wizard has stopped working. That might be something with this new core. Um. But the setup is working and you might have a, tr a problem with the XMS memory. Something that was changed in this update was, among other things, a problem with the RAM, I think. Um, and it's a new setting in this update from the Cache 24 update that, uh, that it now has the RAM setting feature. Um, so yeah, it can see my mouse, it can see the sound card being Sound Blaster Pro and it's Sound Blaster Pro 2 which is relevant when setting up games. Uh, it says MIDI support is disabled, which I'm not sure why, because it should be something in my startup files to enable it. And also it sees the video adapter as Super VGA. Um, so that's pretty nice. And I have a mouse. And I can see standard. Swapping is fast. I can set it to Trident, which is uh, specific audio card, I think, uh, video card. Um, mouse actuation means uh, like we it's possible to actuate Game Wizard using mouse buttons. The serial IQ number, I think that's actually something that Game Wizard has to, to actuate Game Wizard using some external hardware. Um, oh, that's why it doesn't see it. Not sure if it's three thirty, is it? Mm. Let's just try to see what it'll do. Mm, still not working. Anyway, that's not what I was wanting to show anyway. Um, so with this new BIOS, um, oh, that's actually another way to show the BIOS. I have put on a bunch of tools in this one. So T-Sync is is made for this because it's the the, the T-Sync 4000 uh, video card. Um, I think the docs will show you there ET4000. And um, and I'm not actually sure if, uh, or I, I'm pretty sure it's not actually important to use these uh, drivers. See, this one supports, uh, among others, it supports 
T-Sync Labs ET3000, 4000, and uh, 4000 V32. The BIOS we're using is actually ET4000 V32, but I'm not sure that's that's what it will need to run. But at least in Windows, it uh, it only works with ET4000 and not with ET4000 V31. Um, so that's a bit strange. But when we run this, it says it's a it's installing it for this graphics card, the ET4000, so it also detects it as ET4000 instead of ET4000 V32. And then it has the... Uh, it shows the old BIOS, and uh, that's just interesting, because when I was running the wrong uh, old BIOS uh, for the graphics card, it would show VGA, the standard VGA in that point. And now it actually shows that it did have VCA VB 1.2 compliant. And uh, it also sees it as having one megabyte of memory. And normal DAC. I'm not sure what DAC is. Um, I've also read about there being a r version 4 of this. Uh, the driver for this. I'm not sure if I have it somewhere. Um, maybe it's one of these. But um, yeah, uh, you don't actually have to run this to get it working because it seems games generally just detect it themselves, and uh, I haven't found any games that needs it. Um, well, one interesting thing that's not Visa related is that I got Blackthorn working, but not the DOS version of Blackthorn. I actually took the uh, Blackthorn has been released for free from Blizzard on Battle.net. So you can download that, but those files are um, they are actually for for Windows. So they took uh, and and it uses some types of DOSBox, I think, and and then runs it in a, with a special file they made for Windows. But I have the original Blackthorn. Uh, oh, this is actually mm, yes, this is the original game, and. And I think it's uh, this file and the data file. These are the two only files that that you have from the DOS part game, the when you to in the Windows version they released. Uh, and they actually have an extra extra file outside it. So all the other files is from me uh, installing the original DOS version of Blackthorn. Um, uh, because it needed the setup file and um, and I'm guessing this uh, yeah I'm not sure what the setup file actually does where it uh, puts the settings but r using the setup file it made it possible for me to run Blackthorn with audio and everything uh, which one oh let's get it 100 megahertz. Yeah, it's oh wait, not practice. Oh, and that's actually a new thing, isn't it? I don't think uh, the original game had practice. But the the other new thing in, in this version, and the reason why I took a, and made the Windows version into a DOS version, is you can continue the game now, instead of having to type in codes. Um. So when you complete a game, it will... Um, tell you what level code you had from the last level, but it should also continue where you got to in the game. And it did work for me last I tried, but I'm not sure uh, if this is the where I actually played the game, because it doesn't seem like it's starting at the end of the level now. But as you can see, it says uh, last password, which is strange because it's the password for the first level, I guess. Um, Oh, and 
I'll just show you what I used for the audio settings. But this one is actually pretty easy to set up because it seems to tell you, yeah, I'm just using AdLib for audio. Ah, yeah, I actually had to download the manual to get that working. Uh, otherwise, you can't run the setup without the manual. Um, but on to some some Super VGA games. Um, a good one, I think, is Settlers 2. Um, so I have set it to OPL3 and 100 megahertz and 16 megabytes. It should be fine having it to 256 megabytes of RAM because that's that was what the default setting was before. Um, and here I just set it to the original Sound Blaster card with the um, with the default settings pretty much. So yeah, it even configures automatically, so it tells you whether it's detected or not. I have come across a few games where it doesn't tell you. With the uh, the settings you just picked uh, working, you have to actually set it up, uh, put in some settings, then exit the setup program and run the game, and then it will hopefully work. Otherwise, it might then tell you that it's not working. So yeah, Super VGA, lots of colors. I think it's actually still just 256 colors, but used pretty well. And uh, we're I also think it's running in 640 times 480, and it's the gold edition. Um, yeah, and uh, we can even try setting it even higher. And it says this about the mouse, but. I actually tried connecting an extra USB mouse, but that didn't work. Uh, both USB mouse would just be, be cut, detected as the same. Um, so I think uh, it just it's just to mention that it's possible to use a direct mouse in the serial port. But I don't think um, AO486, the AO486 core supports it yet. So I haven't tried in an 800 times 600 yet, but we'll see how it runs. It'll probably run a bit too slow because it was already a bit slow at 640 times 480. I'll just turn down the volume a bit. Well, that's actually not too bad. It seems to be about the same as before. Oh yeah, I can even move the windows around in this version. Ah, it is a bit slow, isn't it? It seems to be lagging a bit. Oh yeah, it supports audio tracks. Um, Here we go. Um. So let's try and go back to this. <laughs> this is just the first level of the campaign. Yeah, that's a bit smoother, I think. We get to see more frames of the animations now.
So that's really nice. This is a great game, I think. But something that has annoyed me a bit is that uh, Duke Nukem 3D doesn't actually run as, as good as, as it uh, did before. Um, it's now just running at 4 or five, 5 frames per second, which is actually somewhat playable, but but yeah, not really playable, I guess. Um, you can still go around in it and so on, but it's a bit like Doom was before this uh, these new cores. So it can run the game somewhat well. I hope that gets better. Um, Death Rally, I have got this working, but. Uh, yeah, the trick was to get the audio working, um, but it runs really slowly, so I'm not going to show this. Um, Destruction Derby, I haven't shown that before, but that uh, actually ran... Um, yeah, that was with, with the other core, so it might be slower this time. Uh, let's just try it just to see. And this is not Super VGA because this was actually working in the Casio 20 core as well. Uh, what was the controls again? Oh yeah, it was mouse controls that really annoyed me. Yeah, I got some points. But yeah, that's still running very well, I think. Mm. Mm. How do I go back? Is that actually the quit button? No. It's strange that the game controls support mouse, but the game menu doesn't. Ah, it's just escape to quit. I thought I tried that. Um, does the game actually have music, but it just didn't set it up right? Audio setup. Yeah, I know. It only has, has one. That was a PC speaker sound. Um, so, oh yeah, another thing with... Uh, this is a thing that got fixed in this update, uh, Cache 25. And in the last video I showed how Doom would have to... to be set down to 30 megahertz. Otherwise, it would fail to detect the audio settings. But now uh, we don't have to use the trick to where we lower the speed to 30 hertz to get the audio working. We can actually just get right into the game. And yeah, Doom is running quite well. Uh, 
Um, so there we go. And well, that's it. That is not the uh, Super VGA. So I have some more games to show. Um, oh yeah, I already showed Settlers two, so I think uh, it would make sense to show Settlers one. This one is really annoying to set up. Um, so it has an install. To install this version does at least. I'm not sure if this is how it works for everything. And this is how I set it up. So Adlib, Music Synthesizer card, and uh, the Creative Labs. Oh, and make note that there's an Adlib Gold card as well. And that one doesn't seem to work. Not even though I have set it to OPL3. Um, and yeah, I set it to... it was This started out having ES, the CD-ROM drive, but um, I don't use that. Uh, I don't have one since it's... And I'm not emulating one. The emulator still doesn't support a CD-ROM drive. And the sound effects are just the regular sound settings. Um, and then it can check that the settings are correct. And we can quit. Set the game directory. It all automatically detects where the game is, so that's fine. And we have a uh, bad file called Settlers. I'm not sure what it does completely, but it runs the game and works. Oh, I haven't actually tried running the intro, um, but I'm guessing that works since the rest works. Oh, here's the intro. That's probably part of what the um, the bad file does. And I'm thinking that the the settlers probably worked even before we got these updates, but now uh, settlers also have the super VGA feature. So, if we skip the intro, and and it's a correct version, so we can go right past it. And we can increase the map size. This here decreases and increases the map size. And having a map size of 8, it was uh, quite a problem on the Amiga, because if you had only one megabyte of RAM, you could only have a map size of... I think 3 was actually the biggest map size. And uh, some Amigas even only had half a megabyte of RAM. And I'm not sure, I guess they might have had to run it at even less, uh, smaller map sizes to play the game. Um, so we have those settings, and then we have Super VGA mode. Which will, and this also supports two players, and that's why there's uh, settings for the right side. But we'll just change the, the settings here. Um, and it takes a while to load. But it's really nice that that this um, update got it so that we don't have to switch it between 30 megahertz and 100 megahertz all the time to to run games because it was most games that had the problem that that doom has where it uh, where it will not be able to detect the the sound card on a fast computer um so yeah this is uh, the settlers in super vga mode And you can just build stuff. Um, yeah, it seems to be running at full speed as well. It probably should, but it's nice that it does. Um, and 
and then another game I think is interesting that works very well now is uh, Little Big Adventure. And it was also annoying setting up the settings for this game. Because you go in here and, and it actually disables all the settings. It, do, it doesn't uh, show what settings you had before. So you have to set it up manually each time. Um, and I'm using Sound Blaster 2 here. That's what I got working with 220H as the for the audio card. And then the, the sound effects card is 220 and 5 for the IQ. Save parameters, quit to us, and run the game. Adline Software, they made some great games. They also made Time Commando, which I think requires Windows, not sure, but it's quite a 3D game and and it probably requires um, an FPU which is a coprocessor and this core doesn't support coprocessor. Um, so that stops some games from working and it's probably also why Duke Nukem runs a bit slow because it uh, it takes advantage of a coprocessor but it doesn't need it to run. Um, and then there's the intro. We'll just skip that. Because the interesting is showing that the game can actually run. And I think you press forward twice to run. So enter this inventory. Oh yeah, here we go. So there should be a button for running. Shift is also... Oh, I need to be aggressive now. Yeah, that seems to run in, in full speed. I'm not sure if this game requires Super VGA, but um, but yeah, actually, I'm pretty sure it does because in the setup, you didn't have that many options for the. the graphics card as you can see here. The top one is Visa compatible which is I guess just a regular one. We can even actually set it to this one and try that before but it probably doesn't really change anything. Visa seems to be enough. seems to work but yeah I'm pretty sure this doesn't actually do anything different so let's move on to the next game um, descent doesn't work it just uh, quits system shock I think it showed that in the last video syndicate wars I'm not sure if I showed that in the last video. Um, 
and it has a really good sound setup so let's so I'll just go right into the game I haven't tried running it uh, in visa mode uh, um, uh, because it should work without visa actually and um, what does it mm. Yeah, I'm not sure. But it seems to run quite well, I think. Um, at least the menu here, and then we can accept the video. Yeah, this must be Super VGA. Um, but for some reason the numpad is not working. I'm not sure if that is has to do with the the keyboard I'm using or if it so I can't also uh, I can't pre press numlock it doesn't have any effect um, but I can use page up and down to switch the view it is a bit slow but I think the game was actually al always a bit slow and uh, the agents can move around and we can Select all agents, and I guess this is where we can set the speed a bit, so they can move faster. So yeah, this, like, this seems very really play playable, I think. Mm. Yeah, there's a button to change the colors of the U of your agents and the UI. Uh, but I'm looking for a way to quit the game. Let's see. We'll just restart. That seems to be the fastest here. And all the interesting games. Future Shock didn't seem to work. Plot. I already showed um, Duke Nukem, uh, but Plot is also running. This is running a bit slowly, but but it's playable, I think. Uh, at least it was playable with the Catcher 20 core. I'm not sure how it works now with the changes. It looks pretty fine. Of course, we could always try to to disable some of the effects if to see if that might help reduce the. Uh, detail even
Ah, it's shift for jumping. Oh yeah, this is a strange setup. I think it's actually using... Is it mouse movement? Oh yes. That's why it's so strange. Just like at some points, it seems. All right. Uh, they have guns, so yeah, they are a bit angry. Um, and it does support CVVDA, so that you can set it in high resolutions, if I remember correctly, but. That'll probably only make it run worse. Uh, Bitlam is working. I'm not sure as much to show that. Um, I'm not even sure if it runs Super VGA. Aliens I couldn't get running. Uh, Terminal Velocity is working, but that worked before. Um, I guess I can show it. If I could type, wasn't that what I typed? Oh, VC, it's TV, of course. And still no need to lower the frame rate or the, the megahertz of the CPU. And I'm actually not sure how to play this game, but it's pretty simple to just fly around it seems, so... So there's something about destroying some things and such. Apparently not simple enough to control since I just fly into stuff. And it has this afterburner mode where it flies a bit faster, I guess. And you can shoot, you can shoot stuff if you can actually aim correctly. I better slow down. Was it? Yeah, here we go. I'm not great at the controls, and I think it actually becomes harder to to fly the if if you get shot at because then yeah, and they drop these things. I'm not sure what they do, but point is that seems to work. It's probably not super VGA but it's still nice knowing that it runs so well. Um, so yeah that was Syndicate Wars and Settlers 2. Blackthorn. Albion also works and quite well actually. Um, let's try it I guess. Did it freeze? Ah. Here we go. Hmm. 
That's strange. Did a lot of things that was just stuff I had pressed earlier. Hmm. I guess maybe it doesn't run that well with this core. Let's try at 30 hertz. Well, it did run with the uh, the Casio 20 core, so I'm guessing it will probably run again once they have uh, fixed the box in the in the core. Oh yeah, that's another thing. It doesn't always reset when you click it the first time. You might have to click it a few times, so it just goes to a black screen, and then if you click again, it'll probably boot correctly. And let's just go back to 100 megahertz. It might also be that it uh, it's possible to run the game now uh, if we just keep it at 30 hertz and launch it at 30 hertz, but I don't think so. Um, I'm, I'm guessing Heimdall 1 and 2 works. I haven't tried them, but, but they shouldn't be especially much of a problem to run. For some reason I can't get uh, Warcraft working, it always crashes and I've tried different versions. Uh, then there's Warcraft 1. That should work, but I actually haven't tried it. It also doesn't require... Super VGA. So it shouldn't really be a problem to run. Maybe this is a version without the intro. That should be coming some text here. I'm pretty sure these problems are down to the version of the game I'm having here. Usually it... Uh, um, as far as I can tell, the core should be able to run it. Daggerfall... I showed that in the last one, I think. But since it's a new core, it's probably best to test whether it's still working. It seems to be the correct settings. Oh wait, let's just... Yes, it's working. And I guess fall. Oh, dagger. Dagger must be the run to run it with. Except that doesn't work, so no CD. We have a batch file for it. I'm thinking I'll also try to make a video showing um, how to emulate CD drives for actually installing games from CDs and yeah, although you don't only have the ESO files because you can do that with, with DOS as well. There are different ways of, of making, um, making CD drives in DOS. You can even make uh, folders into CD drives which is also useful. Uh, let's try loading a save game, and I already have one from last I tried. I 
And it's still running great. And I think I showed in the last game as well that... Uh, No, that's actually when you start the game, yeah. How how big the map is, because this game actually contains uh, Morrowind and Skyrim and so on. As uh, parts of this game that you can travel to. But each area is just not as detailed as in those games, but it's a, it's a really large game. Um, full screen? It's not full screen? All oh, right, that type of full screen. So it seems like this game might not actually support Super VGA, but it looks pretty great without it as well, I think. Mm. So that was some more games, I think. Let's see. Oh yes, we have plenty of games here. Lands of Lore, I didn't actually try that yet. That would be pretty awesome if that works. So... Set up. Mm. Let's try Pro. Five hundred and fifty eighty five kilobytes RAM. Uh, I think we'll manage. But I'm not sure the music is working with this setup. Oh it is awesome. This is one of the games I have still not gotten around to actually playing. But I've heard it's, heard it's really good. There are three games in the series, and but the first one should be the best one. So this is uh, the team, and we have gone to, the, I think it's the king. Oh, and we actually picking which which we uh, champion to pick a strong one a magic one let's take the magic one Now it's interesting if it will work completely. Hmm. Might it use more than sixteen megabyte? Pretty sure it's very rare for DOS stuff to actually use more than 16 megabyte. Also, especially because it seems to have 64 megabyte, but I'm not sure if it really has that. Mm, it could also be that one of the sound settings isn't working. So, let's try it again. That was the G drive and games. Setless. Here we go.
Let's try this instead. So far, so good. Mm, I guess maybe it's not an audio problem. See what other games there are. Uh, I'm pretty sure this version of Command and Conquer isn't fully working, but let's try and see what happens. I don't think I've tried this since I got uh, the w core working with Super VGA. Oh yeah, this is one of those games. I'm not sure if this is because of a problem with the core or what is causing this, but it looks like the same error in a lot of games. So I think that's um, a CPU core problem. Atlantis. Oh. What? How do how do you set up the audio? I guess we don't. It just detects it or something. That's nice. So in the end, Dunes Four, um, the fate of Atlantis. And I won't ruin the game, but it's working. Um, and that also means Day of the Tentacle is working. Um, oh yeah, Abuse actually supports Super VGA. But it's already running a bit slow in VGA. So it might not be too heavy to to be set up. Mm. Wait, maybe it maybe the dust version doesn't actually support Super VGA. Oh, this is version one point zero. I think it's. It's probably version uh, 1.2 that that supports Super VGA. And I think it's running a bit slowly um, when you run into enemies and such. And the cannons can be used as a trap here. That's pretty funny, I think. And uh, yeah. The abuse level editor. That's actually pretty pretty well made, I think. 
where you can design your own levels. But it seems it actually changes the actual levels in the game. So it's a bit of a risk to begin editing the levels, I guess. It's always fun when, when games have level ed editors. Uh, how do we quit? Window. Quit. So what else? Commando death rally. Shadow world, shadow sorcerer. There should be some more Super VGA games. I think it's on another hard disk. Um So this one. And Blood Magic. Um already tried that because it doesn't require Super VGA and it runs quite well and it still does. Dark Forces should work, but not this version, it's the DOG version that I tried to just make run here. And then there's Duke Nukem and it's not running as fast as before, which is a bit annoying. This is Atomic Edition so it might run better with the non-Atomic Edition. Um, and with this game you used to also have to lower the speed to 30 megahertz to get the sound working and then you could do other stuff. And then you could uh, yeah, sit it back up once it had begun playing sounds and, and it would have the audio. But, um, but now it's working. The beginning of the game is actually a bit of a problem because the demo is showing a level where, the, uh, where it has water in the level and Water is a problem without the FPU, it seems, so that is running quite slowly, even with uh, the Cache 20 core. And that is the demo that's running, the loading right now. So it's so slow that it's even a problem getting the menu up. And then uh, you can even see the uh, the icons at the menu, they have trouble spinning around these. They uh, show a few extra frames. Um, it runs a bit better when once you get into the game. As I said earlier, it's it's playable, but it's it's not good. It might help to reduce the screen size a bit. Or oh, we can actually try to change all of these. This looks better. Yeah. Well, it doesn't look better, but it runs better. Um, but I should have looked up this, yes. Um, so we can type DN rate. And it shows you the FPS now. So this is 11 FPS, 12 FPS. 
and um, then we can try to see what happens if we change these settings. And yeah, now it's 80 FPS and if we also increase the screen size then it becomes quite a problem. Now it's down to 5 FPS. So that ran better before, so I think there's a chance that it might run better again uh, when they are done with the call and the next release. Uh, Quake requires FPU, so that still doesn't run. Screamer 2 and Screamer 1 both requires FPU and they won't run. Um, or at least I don't think so. They actually do seem to have these different start files. Um, so I think I'll try to see what happens if I run the game from the original CD, uh, since I have this game, and see if maybe I can get it to work. Um, oh yeah, the GOG version of Shadow Warrior. Um, set up. Mm. I'm not sure what the DMA is supposed to be. Oh wait, this is also wrong. Sound Blaster 2. And 32 voices. I'm not sure it can handle that, but might as well try it. And there's still a problem with right and left audio. I'm not sure if that's the core of what it is, but oh well. Oh, and it supports Super VJ. I mean, we might as well try it just to see what happens. Probably makes it run really badly, but we'll see. It's strange that Blood actually seems to run better than Duke Nukem, because Blood is one of the more advanced engines than, than Doom, and that it might also mean that this actually runs better than Duke Nukem. <laughs> and this is the DOG version, but the uh, classic version, not the Redux version. I'm pretty sure the Redux version is not made for DOS. Um, kit mode. <laughs> Most of the offensive content. Yeah, that's a lot of co offensive content. Uh, level stats? Nah. Let's just see how it handles this. And it detected the mouse, so it's interesting whether it has mouse. Whoops. Okay, that that's not running very well. 
but uh, click. There we go. Uh, but that is in Super VGA mode, which is not expected to actually run with a work well for this. So let's try VGA and I think that's the only thing we need to oh we use level selection. Oh yeah, these games have some amazing level editors. Uh, I'm not sure Blood does, but Duke Nukem and Shadow Warrior both have level editors. And with um, Shadow Warrior, they updated the build engine so that it actually supports where you can actually walk on top of where you are. Uh, both using voxels like they did in, I guess, Duke Nukem. That, that was not really voxels, but that was um, floating sprites or something that you could walk on. And in and in this game they have voxels graphics where the, where some of the weapons you pick up and such they have three D graphics. Um, you no mess with Wang. But they also have um, so in the editor you can uh, um, so you can make an area go in above itself and. Uh, have pseudo 2D two levels of height, um, and they even have a trick they use where you can be above another place and jump down, and then walk around there, using some some tricks where it's um, it's like teleportation some and and seeing another layer below you. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a lot more advanced this than than the Duke Nukem engine. Who want to some wang? And he has the best comments. Um, it's full screen. I would like to see this. Oh, and what about the frames per second? Well, I'll just we'll just eyeball it. Explosions does make the game lag. Um, yeah, it's definitely running better than than Duke Nukem 3D. guess it's not fully working. Mm. But still, when it's running, that's uh, running at full speed. I guess maybe it will work playing around with the settings and see if it can run better than it does there. Um, and I think that's all the games I have to show for now, except um, like last time I think I'll end, show, end with Windows and showing how that works. Um, Windows 98 in this version has a lot of problems. It, um, it crashes a lot. Windows 95 also crashes a bit, but it's better than... Oh wait, I can't show Windows 95 because it complains about some errors, which is really just that I have very large files on the disk and it doesn't like having those large files. Oh, I can just skip the setup. Last time it didn't allow it. it uh, oh, maybe it's just this time either. Oh, another one thing to show with these settings, you can set the RGB to, uh, yeah, and the colors changed completely. 
and then you can change it back and it works again. I'm not sure what this one does. Oh yeah, also looks much different. Um, so this is um, with 256 colors. Actually, I think it's even 16-bit colors. Uh, yes, 16-bit, but 640 times 480. Um, and the driver is the Tsing Labs ET4000, and it's using Direct Draw. But so far, I've had no luck trying to install um, Demon Tools and or Alcohol 120%, which can be used to emulate CD and DVD drives, and just use ESO files and actually. Uh, all the formats for different uh, for CDs, so it can even emulate audio CDs and have them mounted, and uh, and that would be pretty pretty great. Except I can't install the USB update. I found the USB update, the USB support update for Windows 95, but it refuses to install because it has to scan the disk. So I might be able to fix that. Uh, I think I'll try that later. Um, but it tries to run scan disk and then scan disk sees these files I have put on the disk that are too big. Um, files that I wanted to get to run with this to with the with Windows 95. Um, so disk worlds. And I think it also has a problem problem with Dune 2000. And this is actually just the installations files for Discworld. I'm not sure why it has a problem with them. But it wants to fix this problem. And I don't want it to fix it. Um, so I think instead I'll just... Oh yeah, this is the Windows version. Uh, the, the one Blizzard released for free of Blackthorn. And these are the files I used to get it to run under DOS. Because these files are newer w w Windows version files. Um, and it requires 2 megabyte of EMS memory, which I guess we don't have in this version of Windows. Uh, but even if they uh, could run it more than that, it would complain about the audio setup. Which is why I used the original files to help with that. Um, but yeah, this looks very promising so far, I think. Um, oh yeah, I also tried installing DirectX 8 and that caused a problem that also happened in Windows 98. So I'm not sure if DirectX games will work with this. Um, I'm guessing it won't for now, but when they release the core, it probably will. So that's what I have to show for now. Um, oh, sorry. Actually, let's see if I have some other disks, maybe. Um, I don't think I have that many interesting games on the other ones. And Windows 98. There we go. Just a quick look. Maybe Micro Machines 2 is interesting if it will run. I have the Beholder 2. Let's try Flashback actually. That looks ready. Right, that looks correct. And.
it should work, so... Yeah, it seems it does as well. The audio does sound like it's uh, it lacks a bit. There's a bit of stuttering or some something. I guess we could try to see what. Let's uh, skip the intro and see. Hmm. I guess you can skip the intro. Ah, oh, there we go. And uh, that's an info. Ah, oh, that's good to know. That's working as well. Um, I really like this game. Played through it a few times. Reminds me that I should probably try running Fate to Black on this and see how that runs. I doubt that will work though. I suspect it uses FPU as well. Uh, I have the Builder 2. Not sure if it uses super vga but nah, it just uses vga so start So the intro is running, you can transfer, um, let's see if we have a safe game, quick start party. And we have sound effects as well. Oh, the numpad is working here. So I guess the numpad isn't completely broken. That's nice. Uh, and copying three, I actually tried this earlier and it seems to be working. So I'll just show you. It actually complains about extended memory for some reason. Um, it did that last time as well. I'm not sure if it's because it has too much memory, because that's sometimes a problem. But it seems like it's running quite well. I always like the Goblins games as well. And um, mm, Terminal Velocity we already tried. This version of Warcraft 2 doesn't work either. So Micro Machines 2, I think we'll just try that as the last game. Hmm? likes the CFG file. I'm guessing it won't run very well then. Ah, oh. interesting. I guess it auto detects or something. This might be Super VGA. 
But it's nice that you don't have to worry about it since... Since we have... This doesn't seem very responsive. Not sure why it stops accepting an input, but at least it can run the game. What the problem is with the keyboard is hard to say. What's that me do? Oh, probably not. This looks like another demo. I think it's possible to get that to run with some, with by trying some more stuff. Um, yeah, Dungeon Master Two maybe, Dungeon Hack. Looks correct, but let's try to auto detect just in case. HMI. Ah, probably a good thing we did. But yeah, when Lines of Lore is working, I'm guessing this is working as well. Oh, wait, Lines of Lore didn't work completely, did it? might not work. Let's see if there are some bad files maybe. Yes. That's better. No, it wasn't. Well, that looks like the type of error that I suspect to be bound to the CPU. Um, could also be that it requires the 622 and uh, I think this disk yes it's small enough to work with with the 622 um, oh let's just see how doom runs under this fine um, but yeah with with this version we only have 595 conventional memory free um, and another thing is it doesn't actually see more than 64 megabyte of RAM even though it's set to 256 and uh, I think that's the same um, that's because it's um, it's not the Windows 98 DOS that has a 32-bit, so and 32-bit makes it support more RAM and it makes it support bigger disk sizes as well. Um, mm, now there's some other games that would be interesting to try here. Kingdom of Magic, pretty sure this wasn't... Hmm. Let's see what it says. I need a CD room to install. Yeah. I know. Um, but this is one of the games that's a reason to try to emulate a CD. Settlers you already tried. Surf City is also Settlers, it's just the US version. Um, 
Worlds 2 might be interesting to run. The Alone in the Dark games, I think they already ran on the other core, but um, from before Cache 20, or the Cache update. But I'm not sure it's especially interesting to you to try. Um, so let's try micro machines again. So far, so good. Well, now it works better. Screen size. Press Q to install. Continue. Ah. So if it wasn't running very well, uh, we could lower the resolution, it seems. QAOP. Yes, definitely change controls. What? Well, I guess changing controls meant just switching between joystick or the keyboard controls. And now to see whether the game itself is running. QAOP. Uh, this is from before WASD was the standard. But that's definitely running. As far as I can tell it's running at full speed. I'm not though, I'm really bad at these games. Well, micro machines I got pretty good at, but not right now. So. Oh, yeah, it also has a construction kit. I like it when games does that. So let's see if Dungeon Master 2 works any better now. about to say I didn't expect it to run better, but it actually loaded the game now. Hmm. I guess this means there's possibly a lot more games I need to try again, because it actually runs now. Yep. Oh. So I can see him. Yeah. It's not that I know how to play the game, so let's um, find a way to quit. Which I guess will be just resetting. Mm. Oh yeah, Automem. That's actually almost as efficient as running Windows 98. Uh, it also gives us more EMS memory. Um, Oh, and that's another interesting detail. Largest executable program size. So, convention the amount of conventional memory is free uh, decides how large an exe file you can run. 
So if the exe file of the game, so the Doom for example here is uh, 709 bytes, which makes it, I'm not sure. It might actually be 640 something. So I guess maybe it, it doesn't take that much of the memory when it runs. Bit strange actually. That's Ecstatica. But with this working, I think it's worth trying out Warcraft 2 again. Uh, where did I put Warcraft 2? Here we go. Oh, and was that Warcraft 1 as well? Yeah, we didn't get complete into this game, did we? Is this just the install files? Oh, that's annoying. I should probably add some timestamps to this video when it's done. Since I'm not pausing the video. This is the one, yes. Oh, wait. Ah. Freshly installed Warcraft 1. Much better. The CD version of this game actually has audio for these. stuff like uh, farms which is I think the mission but what's more interesting is seeing if we can get Warcraft 2 working now um, which was in the games folder on the other disk And let's take the setup first. It auto detects as pro. Yeah, it's the regular one. I'll set that and your sound card works perfectly. Awesomeness. And then the audio, and that should actually be this. 
So let's see if it agrees. Nice. But this game is a Windows 95 game, or partially at least. So yeah, I didn't expect it to work now. It would be nice if it had though. Um, any other games that had this problem? Uh, I think so, but they are on 4 gigabyte disks. So some of the games I haven't been able to run might actually run now. Um, but I'm not sure if I can access them. 2 gigabyte is the limit of DOS 6.22, so that's why this is 2 gigabyte. Another world abuse, maybe no deep new. Oh wait, death rally actually. Ah, it's probably still running slow. It would be really strange if it suddenly got faster in dust six twenty two than it is in in uh, Windows 98 does. The menus and such actually seem like it's working great, but in the game it's not so good. I guess I haven't set up the audio correctly, but even without audio the game has like inside the game and I think it's because this game also benefits from FPU because it should be enough megahertz. Yeah, so the audio is partially working. I'm not sure why it stops running. Yeah, this is not running very well, just like in Windows 98 does. I'm not sure what key I shoot with, that's annoying. But anyway, let's quit this one. Does it strike? Um, Lance of law. But that worked, didn't it? I think that worked last time. I think this game has the is set up wrongly so it doesn't um Yeah. It gives this problem. So that's a problem with the installation. Someone else on the forum did get C working and it should run nicely on this core. Um, I 
I guess running Shadow Warrior under this would make it run better. Oh, Descent, that would be a good test. Because that also have this problem where it throws these zeros. I don't think it works, but I was surprised by the other game. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that'll be it for now. Um I'll probably make another video when another core comes out and see if we can get some more things working. So um I hope you liked the video. Um have fun, have a nice day.